Looks like we are good to go. Three, two, one. What up, what up, what up, podcast 211. It is April the 15th. This is, uh, this is a Sunday edition of the show. We have not done this together in two weeks, I believe. So Sunday night, it's going to be a good time. Uh, go on and, and let you know today's show is brought to you by MyBookie.ag, the best online sports book with the best odds. If you're looking to make a play uh, on baseball or, or anything else, uh, that, that whole thing is, is rolling right now, the NBA playoffs, everything else. Sign up at MyBookie.ag with promo code WCE50 for a 50% deposit bonus. That means if you deposit $200, you get a $100 deposit uh, on top of it. So knock that thing out today. Use promo code WCE50 at mybookie.ag today. If you're watching on Facebook right now, hit the share button. Help us out. Let us know what's going on. Tell everybody about us. If you were listening on the podcast and you have not subscribed, do so. iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, all your favorite podcast apps. My favorite personally is Podcast Addict, but that's just me. Anyway... Go ahead, share that thing out, uh, subscribe to iTunes, leave us a review. Uh, let's go ahead and tell you what we are going to talk about today. First off, we know it's been a while. We've been off for a week, a little over a week. Uh, my wife is nine months pregnant. We thought that we were going into labor. We did not go into labor. So we're still waiting. We're still trying to figure this thing out. He'll be out soon enough. Um, we be in his side of the street. My my side of the street. Yes. We we are not going. He to ain't going. <laughs> he ain't handling nothing ever again. I, however, am. So we're waiting on uh, on my son to appear. He will make his debut. I would guess in the next couple of weeks. Uh, hopefully this week because my wife is super uncomfortable. Uh, but on today's show, we're going to talk about Ole Miss objecting to Michigan's waiver to the NCAA to have former Rebel quarterback Shea Patterson play immediately, and how Tom Mars absolutely went off on him again. Uh, four Mississippi State students broke into the Alabama football complex on Wednesday night uh, last week and stole all kinds of stuff. So we're going to talk about what we would steal if we went into different football complexes. <laughs> we're going to talk uh, UFC notes and whatnot. Uh, not a whole lot, but there is a new rivalry. And we'll talk again about uh, how funny it is that Dana White went back to being completely positive and upbeat about Conor McGregor once the uh, once UFC 223 was over. Um we're going to talk WrestleMania, WWE, mainly because I've got a question about how that business works. I'm, I'm curious about the background on some of this stuff. Uh, and we're going to talk, uh, well, <laughs> I've got a funny story about cockfighting in Los Angeles that we're going to get to. I'm, I'm curious about that as well. And we're going to talk about ESPN's Get Up ratings uh, being a little less than stellar. Uh, and Chris is a businessman, so we're going to talk about the business side of it. Uh, the show, as usual, brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. Get the latest news and great stories on the website. Make sure to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. We're on Twitter, at winningcures. You can follow our personal accounts on Twitter, at GaryWCE. You follow you me, at Chris B. Giannini. All right, let's, uh, let's fire off with, let's talk about Shea Patterson. Okay. Is that cool? Can we, yeah. uh, can we start with that one? Yep. All right, Shea Patterson is uh, officially transferred to Michigan. He is enrolled there. Jim Harbaugh, all that good stuff, the, the Wolverines. They have put in a waiver to get him to play immediately. And the, the talk was that the former football staff at Ole Miss uh, lied about how they got him on campus, or lied to get him on campus. They, it, it was egregious acts, is what the lawsuit, not lawsuit, but the waiver said. Now, Ole Miss came out, and the idea behind this is they did not have to respond. They, they didn't have to submit any kind of a response whatsoever. They were given, like, it's a complimentary thing. Michigan had to send them a copy of what they sent the NCAA. And then Ole Miss can either not respond or respond. They don't have to do anything. It's not going to hurt anybody if they don't do anything. However, they came out and objected to it because they did not believe that the former football staff did anything misleading or egregious about Shea Patterson or about any of the guys that left. I am on a different side of this. 
I it, obviously we've been following this story for a long, long time. I talked to Tom. He told me today he expects it to be in June when the final NCA verdict comes down. I don't know if that's been talked about anywhere, but it, it's June when that's supposed to be coming. Now, let me go on and get your thoughts on why Ole Miss would do this, and then I'm going to pull up Tom's statements in uh, SB Nation's Maize and Brew uh, website, blog, and he absolutely lays into them. I mean, it's it's bananas. But what what do you think? Like, what should so, Ole Miss have done? Here? So first thing is, I don't have the relationship with Tom that you do. So I don't have a lot of the information that you will get to, to form opinions. Um, and I'm and I, I promise I'm I'm not going to sit here and just try to be the contrarian for everything. But these are honest opinions. I don't think responding is a problem. Like if somebody said something about my program, and I have the right to respond, then I'm probably going to 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 accept that right. I'm probably going to I'm probably going to respond as long as the the initial thing was negative. I have a right to defend myself and explain myself to whatever degree that I want to and then people can say, "All right, you have his side, you now have our side and and you can formulate a decision." Here's the thing that I have an issue with everyone making this a big deal is Ole Miss didn't try to block him from going to Michigan. He, he was able to transfer anywhere in the country that he wanted to go. He could have stayed in the SEC. They blocked zero schools from him. This is not an Ole Miss rule as to why he cannot start immediately. This is an NCAA rule. I think that there are people out there trying to make Ole Miss the bad guy in this when this is an NCAA being a bad guy. And I'm never going to get off that because you know the problems that I have with the NCAA and their rules and their bullcrap logic and the way they run things. And, and I absolutely I, I am not going to let them off the hook. I, this is not no, Ole Miss being a jerk. This I, is the NCAA having bad rules. I will go ahead and say that the NCAA is is working on adding. They have already uh, talked about it at one of their meetings. They will implement this, I believe, next year. In men's football and women's and men's college basketball, you will be allowed to transfer without sitting out if you have a 3.0 GPA or higher. And that's... That's fine. It's a step in the right direction. But that goes into effect, I believe, next year. And so Ross Bjork, the AD at Ole Miss, who was around for all of this, who was part of the, uh, the quote, cover-up, um, he stated, we would not oppose a waiver of the year-in-residence requirement based on a legitimate reason for any student-athlete who wants to transfer from Ole Miss. However, Bjork does not believe that it is a legitimate reason for Patterson to play immediately or any of the other kids. Like, they're going to submit the same objection to all of this. Here's what Tom Marsh said. He said, For Ole Miss to assert now that these statements were not false or misleading, given the reaction of the sports media across the board, given that they have no explanation for why they hid the notice of allegations from the public for five months in a manner that was found to be illegal, and considering the fact that they already admitted publicly in October that they made statements that were misleading to the sports media, it does raise the obvious question why they would now have their lawyers tell the NCAA that they apologized for something in October that they really didn't do. Why would Ross Bjork say they didn't make any false and misleading statements? So it, tell me tell me that side. Like, what what is Ole Miss's endgame here? They, 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 well, Ole Miss's endgame is just defending themselves. Shea Patterson said that Ole Miss lied about something, and Ole Miss is saying, we didn't lie to you at all. Ole Miss apologized and admitted to misleading media, not players. Well, see, here's the other side of this. So, so that's, so, I mean, that is the, that is the difference. And, no, I'm, and this I'm is, with you, but this I, is a factor seen... that needs to be talked. This is a factor that needs to be talked about. If Ole Miss's um, problems with Shea Patterson and Shea Patterson's family are so egregious, why is Shea Patterson's brother still on staff there? That's a good that, point. This is this is all this is all something that is not a problem, Gary. Ole Miss has a right to respond to a statement. They responded to it. That's it. That is it. To make it anything more than that is just absurd. And, and we will say this. This does not mean that the NCAA, like, this was not Ole Miss's decision to make. No, like, they this, can is, this is an NCAA problem. It. Right. I'm, I'm with you. So Ole Miss has a, a choice of responding to this. Yes. I'm looking at it for the better of the kid, right? Ole Miss has tons of evidence against them. I have seen all of the evidence where kids have come out and, and said 
that they were being lied to. Okay. Like there are That's fine. text messages, voicemails, all that. Hey, coach so and so told me that nothing's happening because of Houston. Like it was Houston nuts. That's, right. That's right. Or all of this stuff. Like the kids were being told one thing. Then the NCAA. There's a reason but that there this were is an NCAA, multiple kids that ended right. up transferring. Ole Miss has already gotten their punishment for the things that they have done. Okay. Okay. So, so this is an NCAA problem. The NCAA should say we have already gotten all the evidence of all the things that Ole Miss did wrong, and we are going to make an ex- a, a, an exception or not. And this is an NCAA rule. Ole Miss is not blocking them. Ole Miss right, is no, not no. stopping I'm, them I'm from anything. I'm not saying that they are, but why, why they would you are doing... try and block a kid from playing immediately? They're, they Especially... didn't. They're not. Why? Okay. They're not why going to his case, benefit. Why would They're you not trying to help him. Because he's no longer a part of the family. But I understand that you don't have to. You don't have to say anything though. But but why but, even say anything? Because somebody said something negative about you, and you have the right to respond. Saying nothing does not help anything, and you can't hurt somebody for speak for using a right that they have. All right, let's let's jump into uh, Facebook and see what the comments say. Uh, Fletchy jumps in. He says, "Starting to think this is a daily Tom Mars podcast. I get he's a huge source, but you need to spread your sources out, or you risk only telling one side of the story." If Shea and Michigan kept our name out of their mouths, we wouldn't respond to them. Uh, first off, Fletchy, we hadn't done this show in almost two weeks now. Uh, so it's not a daily Tom Mars thing. And we hadn't talked about Tom Mars in forever. So uh, I did post a story last week. but uh, I believe that's what it's but, but we haven't talked about Tom Mars on the show in a really long time. Second, Shea had to talk about what happened at Ole Miss in order to obtain eligibility for next year. But because there, he transferred from Ole Miss. But therein lies the problem. He should be allowed to transfer. We, he, he, he I have no problem with that, but, but the rules are what I, they are but that's, currently. But that's an NCAA problem, and Ole Miss's response does not affect the NCAA ruling. Agree. So why does it matter that the Ole Miss responded? I'm going to throw the question back to you. Why does it matter? I believe it is a bad look, because I don't think that To you, who? To recruits that are going to come in. That's why they have the number one recruiting class for 2019. That's because of quantity, not quality. Oh, I'm just, on, I'm man. just saying, I'm just saying. Give me a break. Nope. You're talking about the 2019 nope. class in I'm, April of 2018. But hang on, if it was such a bad look, why would all these juniors be recruiting? Why would all these juniors be committing? Uh, okay, okay. So, so the all numbers, right. so the numbers show what you're saying is absolutely not affected by these kids. These kids choosing to come to Ole Miss are not affected at all by a statement like this. This is such a small thing that Ole Miss did. Somebody said something negative about them. They had the right to respond. They responded, and all of a sudden, now they, they've committed this huge crime that, that is looked down upon. That's ridiculous. All right, Cameron jumped in on Facebook. He said, doesn't mean their response is correct, though. Why respond and keep the story going? If you don't respond, no one is talking badly about Ole Miss right now. That's, That's my point. I disagree. I don't think I, anybody was talking about Ole Miss until she, this happened. Shea was talking about Ole Miss, and Harbaugh was talking about Ole Miss. No, that's the thing. I don't believe they, – they didn't – the waiver was not released to the public. Nothing was, was public about this until it came out that Ole Miss had objected to oh, it. So, hang on. Ole Miss's objection didn't go to the media. It went to the, the NCAA, right? No, it went to Michigan and the NCAA. That's right. That's right. Who made that public? Uh, okay, okay, I'm with you. All right, I'm see, with you. See, that, uh, we Fletchy, got we got dirty pool going on here, yeah, and you're picking one in. side of it, and that's not okay. Fletchy jumps in. He says, "No one's talking bad about Ole Miss. That's just not factual. Go look at the player reactions after Shea left. They badmouth the hell out of him. That's fine. They badmouth the hell out of him because he wanted to leave, and they did. A lot of those kids came in knowing what they were getting into. Shea says that he didn't know what he was getting into, even though his brothers on staff." Was he on staff before? He was on staff probably to get him. See, I don't know any of that story. See, I don't it's, it's amazing that we don't know things that are kind of common knowledge. Like, I don't cover this stuff at all, Gary, but I know it. When when did Shea Patterson's brother... I'm going to bet it he came on staff during Shea's recruitment. The same reason a lot of these people's dads get on staff. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. What is it? Shea Patterson Jr.? Let's see. Well, no, that would be his... Can't Ole Miss sh- hires, uh, let's see, brother of Shea, or Sean Patterson. Uh, let's see, that was in uh, 2015. How about that? Now, tell but me he this. Was, but he was lied to about it, the status of Ole Miss and what do, was going on. Do you believe that he was given the whole story? Y- yeah, dude, no, I don't. I don't think he was told anything because you're a kid and you don't need to know. You're, we're not in a need to know situation. 
There we go. Hold on. John Stringer jumps in. He came on right before uh, before Shay's commitment. Let's see. Shay enrolled in early January. His brother was hired before that. First in away was not received until late January. That's yep, exactly. I don't believe. I don't that understand. He knew. I don't understand. So hang on. You're you're saying that because Ole Miss responded, then it became a national story. But somebody had to leak that to make it a national story because Ole Miss didn't leak it to the to the public. Agreed. And Sean Patterson's still on staff, so this family doesn't have a problem with Ole Miss, or else he would not be there. You don't think that Sean Patterson would leave if he was going to get paid any more anywhere else? Obviously not. I just don't buy that. I, I, I don't I don't I don't understand. The, the stories that I've heard you're, are you're that literally, this was in you're literally Jerry, you're in danger to, of I've made up my mind and I'm going down this highway and no new information is going to get me off of no, this. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that whatsoever. But I'm just saying I'm you're not saying that I'm not I know, going to change my I, mind. I know you're things. not saying that. I'm telling you from the outside perspective. This is what it looks like, and that is a dangerous place to be. From a PR standpoint, which is what I look at, right? Okay. So I, I was in a band so they, for so they, made, so they made a statement that wasn't, that they didn't know it was going to get made leak, uh, public. A statement was brought to them that was confidential. They made a statement back that I'm sure that they thought there was going to be some level of confidentiality. And, and the all statement the, was never released. The sta- the, the, nobody has read the statement. So we don't know what Ole Miss said? No, we know what Ole Miss said based on Ross Bjork's response. Yes. Okay. So that's the but, thing. But Ross Bjork has to defend himself because somebody somebody leaked something. Somebody made something public that didn't get made public. John jumps in. He said, why did Bjork and Freeze uh, call certain press, including Vulcan, and give them the wrong side of the story before signing? Ole Miss had their letter from the NCAA at the time. This is true. Everybody wants to talk about, well, Shea wasn't, like, Shea was already enrolled in Ole Miss before that big weekend. Well, the NOA came uh, the 20th, 21st, whatever, of January. Shea enrolled on the 25th of January. The big story broke with Pat Forty and whatnot uh, on January 29th, right before the big Rebel weekend. Um, so that's that's where this whole thing gets screwy, right? We've already figured out that they were misleading we're, basically We're, we're hashing out details that, that are not a part of this problem. You, you think that their response is going to affect recruiting. I'm telling you, numbers tell me that that is absolutely not true. Here's the thing. I'm looking at this. Are you going to disagree with those numbers? That's Wait, which numbers? The numbers that they have the number one recruiting class in the country as of right now for 2019, just after and during this whole dust-up. So kids are not going to want to go play there because of this. I just think that's false. I... I think that it leads – because obviously these are kids that are committed right now for next year that have not signed yet. Yeah. But I think well, they can't sign a, now. I think it is – no, they can't until February. That's right. Well, no, until December. Um, but it is something that you have to pay attention to because, like, no, it's not hurting them right this second. I don't think kids care about this stuff, Gary. I don't think they care at all. I don't think I don't one know, kid would ever... Because, Gary, if that's the case, how many people has Nick Saban blocked that tried to transfer out of Alabama? Has it hurt any of his recruiting classes ever? Very few and he's he been, actually tried to block. Oh, that is such horse crap. I've watched it happen all so the time. not horse crap. He, he, and he publicly does it. He publicly goes to the stands and calls them quitters. He calls them quitters, and it hasn't hurt his recruiting class at all, Gary. Which of those did he try and block? I, anyway. He didn't try and block any of them. He tried to block Murray Smith from going to Georgia... Because there was literally an SEC rule in place. I, just because there's a rule. All Ole Miss did was follow the rule in this response, and yet you're, you're saying it was a PR nightmare. I'm, I, I'm saying, I'm not do you bashing. not think this is a PR nightmare? No, I don't think anyone cares. I really don't, Gary. I really don't. <laughs> I don't think there's one 18-year-old, 19-year-old, 17-year-old, 16-year-old on the planet that cares that Ole Miss responded to something Shea Patterson said. Let's see. Hold I on. We, really we got a, we got a bunch care. more in. Hold on. Are we going to read them all? Is that's, this our show or their show? That's it. Well, I'm, they've got good points here. I don't know if they got any points. Cam goes, why say anything? This is a non-story if they don't try to defend it. Uh, I think uh, Fletcher says, I think Michigan made the statement they needed to and Ole Miss made the response they needed to. I don't think they were wrong. Everyone after that is stirring stuff up. I agree. I, uh, I completely agree with that statement right there. Jim jumps in. The first in a way was very minor. The fact that people can't grasp that is mind-boggling. The Leo Lewis stuff was way, way into the future. Agreed, but that wasn't what happened. They misled people about what the first NOA was. Uh, John says they've got the numbers. That's the reason for high ranking. Just watch. They'll finish at 30 after signing. And then Fletchie, to finish 30 with what's happened to us would be amazing. 
look, that's my thing. They've got number one right now. I don't expect them to finish. No, at God, no, one. Gary. I don't like, either. Jesus, nobody wants to go play for Matt Luke. Okay, he's just not excitable. Th- you right? just said it then. No, all I'm saying is, look, if I was a kid, I wouldn't go play for him. I'm telling you the fact that these kids are verbally committing at a junior age right now tells me that they don't care about any of this stuff. It's not hard to get a bunch of three stars to commit early if that is the best option. And then I'm also using a a situation where Nick Saban went to a podium and not just once but multiple times throughout his career called kids quitters and then gets the number one recruiting class in the country the following season. These kids do not care how you treat somebody else. They only care how you treat them. Okay. Okay. And if you think there's anything more to it than that, you are wrong. And and Tom Mars is wrong. He can defend his boy all he wants, and he should. That's his job. He's a badass attorney, and he should do that. But I'm telling you, if you think that that's going, if this is going to be the thing that brings down Ole Miss, the fact that they responded, no, it's going to be all the violations and the lack of being able to go to a ball. Oh, I don't think that, that this will bring Ole Miss down or anything like that. Then what I are think we talking about? I think it's ridiculous that they would make a PR move like this. I think that. I don't, the, I don't. The deal is. I don't think it's a big deal at all. They literally just responded. They responded to Michigan. They responded to the NCAA. Somebody else made it public. Ross Bjork went to defend himself. Look, I'm not a Bjork fan. You know that. I've bashed him on the show multiple Let's, times. I, I believe. But I'm telling you, I don't out, think this is a big deal. I think that Bjork actually spearheaded this whole thing. I think he was over the whole thing. I don't think it was Hugh Freeze. I don't think it was what. That's why he's defending the actions of a former staff that has already been fired. The everybody that was on that you, staff is gone. But you might be right, Gary. I'm just telling you. I don't think this is going to affect recruiting. I don't think this is going to affect any way that any Ole Miss people are going to see their own program. And do they care what anybody outside of Ole Miss people think? No. The answer is no. I think you're probably right for that. I, I think you're Do right. Do you on care that. what anybody outside of Alabama people think about Alabama? No, not really. Then why do you think Ole Miss people should care what anybody outside of Ole Miss fans think about what they're doing? I think that they you have want... two outside people that have nothing to do with Ole Miss. I would judging assume... this school, and they don't give a shit what we think. <laughs> Cameron says Bjork is a moron. I don't and, disagree with that. And that's the thing. I I've think been that saying Ole Miss, that for a long time. The more this stuff stacks up, the more I feel like Ole Miss fans should jump in. Instead of digging their heels in, why are you not going against the guy I that literally was in charge of all see, of this? But we're have, this is where my head is hurting, Gary. That Bjork is making is, a statement. It's not digging heels in. We're not fighting back. Their, we, I'm not even saying we because I'm on the side of the argument. Jesus, you got me agreeing with Bjork. <laughs> They're not fighting back. They literally just made a statement. Hey, he's saying we lied to him. We didn't lie to the kids. We never admit it to publicly lying to the kids. We admit it to lying to the media. We didn't lie to the kids. It's our word against yours, and nobody can go back three years ago and find out that. It's something that literally, it's he said, she said, and Bjork has a right to say it. Does it make him look petty? Yeah, but he's done a lot of other stuff that's made him look way worse than this. Why do we care? Why are we covering this? Why are we making this that See, big of Fletchy, a deal? Fletchy jumps in. He says, we wanted Bjork gone. And then John said, uh, uh, Vitter, who's the chancellor, uh, doesn't know anything about sports, uh, so he listens to Bjork. That's entirely true. That's enti- Because but, Bjork was hired in before Vitter ever got there. Vitter was, what, early 2016, yeah. I think, or late 2015, either one. Um, they were already in the middle of it. Yeah, they were already in the middle of it when, when he, Vitter he brought it. He inherited this. But, but this is my thing, man. I just don't think... The response is a big deal at all. I really don't. It's not something to get upset about. But somebody leaked it to the media. Bjork had to respond to it or got to respond to it. He responded. Once it got leaked, he had to respond. He had to say something. Well, yeah, obviously. But but I don't think his initial response is anything wrong. And I don't think it's going to hurt them in recruiting. I think they're going to be hurt by recruiting because... Uh, because I don't believes, agree with the staff that they have there, and I don't agree with some of the things they're doing there. I think the that they responded the this way because they still have the appeal for the bowl ban for this year. So you don't want to admit to anything right. else that they don't have. And, hang on, and I got that. That's fine. But but I don't. They didn't have to admit anything. Like but, they they didn't have to say anything. And that's why because I feel like because I'm for the kids, right? Like oh that's. My God. Uh, don't roll your eyes at me. Look, that's the like thing. Like you feel sorry for Shea Patterson. Jesus Christ.
Just give me a break. I feel bad for anybody that goes into a situation thinking that they're getting one thing and they don't get it. You do? You do? Well, uh, give me we're another not, we're not, well, I'm done. We're, we've spent 30 minutes talking about this. Well, 25. Okay. But yeah. That's, <laughs> thanks, Mr. Correction. <laughs> All right, let's jump into the next one. All right, four Mississippi State students broke into the Alabama football complex on Wednesday night. Uh, they were arrested on third-degree felony charges. Uh, oh, Fletchy jumps in on the last one, saying nothing is an admission in today's media. That's I would agree with that. I completely agree. 100% true. It, it, responding is not a problem. No, you're, this is ridiculous. All right, anyway. He almost so, said you're right. Four, he almost said you're right and then caught himself because he realized his entire argument would have been. No, I, I did say you're right. That's it, 100% true. 100% true. I'm with you. Why respond then? So, however, you can't prove it from that. So, uh, four oh Mississippi God. State students were arrested Kurt, earlier this week. Kurt, Kurt, please come on. Here's please what they were. <laughs> please, please, if you're out there. God, I'm. I'm... If Kirk Wise jumps in, we, I'd, I'd like to get him on the phone. Good Lord. we we got to get him on the next podcast. Prove it. Uh, prove it. Yeah, you're right about that. Uh, four Mississippi State students arrested earlier this week are accused of stealing. And here is what they were accused of stealing from the Malmore Complex, the Malmore Athletic Facility in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Two watches, two commemorative coins, a raincoat, and a football. Now, they uh, all the items have been recovered. Hang on. Why was this a felony? Uh, according to court documents, they, uh, they were caught on surveillance video. It is a third-degree burglary uh, felony. Isn't it's there supposed felony. to be like a dollar amount before you reach a felony? No, I'm not. I'm not like... Encouraging well, that's the thing. The, the commemorative coins in. and the watches and whatnot could have easily gotten to because I think it's like over five hundred dollars that becomes a thing. Co commemorative coins from Alabama that's games are like big money. That's what I'm. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it's it's a little bit ridiculous. Holy crap! Like so, the joke was when they because they just released this like a couple of days ago. Yeah. Uh, the joke all Thursday was that Mississippi State was jumping in to try and steal a national championship. Right, so Cecil Hurt, our buddy from the Tuscaloosa News, uh, said, "You know they can have the 1941 when we they probably deserve that one more than we do, because Alabama was like nine and two and finished number 21 in the AP poll that year. For some reason, they were like voted the the UPI or the something nationally. I don't I don't understand it. I don't know why you'd even claim it. But uh, but he said, yeah, they they can have the 41 one because like they finished with a better record than we did that year. Like I think they beat us that year." So, I think that was the last year the state actually won an SEC championship, if I'm not mistaken. It might have. It's been a while. I, I it really think that it was hasn't the last happened year. in our lifetime. Uh, let's see. McKinnon jumps in. $1,000 is supposed to be the point in a felony, depending on the state. I know I, McKinnon I would say, know this no, a lot better. And I wonder if the states are different. Alabama, look, 500 bucks is pretty close to $1,000 in Alabama. Here we go. All four men were charged with third degree burglary on Monday and later released on $7,500 bond. Here's the thing. I'm curious if you were drunk enough. Oh, I would not be drunk. I would be in complete right minded mission impossible stuff and I wouldn't have been caught. Well, all right, so tell me this. If you're going to break into. <laughs> Cameron said, we'll take the 41 one. <laughs> uh, if you're going to break into a football complex, who's do you break into and what are you, what are you stealing? I'm breaking into Alabama's. All right, for, for what? I'm going into their. Uh, Head strength and conditioning coach's office. I'm taking all the steroids. <laughs> every bit of the HGH, cream in the clear, every anabolic steroids that they're shooting, all the horse steroids are shooting. Oh those my butts. God. That's, I, that's I what I'm taking. Something else. I figured a playbook. I no, figured like okay. it, no, no playbook. Jesus, those plays aren't that you're, creative. You're breaking right? in and stealing run, steroids. Run off tackle right. <laughs> It's not that it's not that comp your 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 schemes are not that complex. Oh God Almighty! It, but see, here's the thing though: if you steal all the steroids, like obviously they'll be able to get more. Like, yeah, <laughs> but but now we know what you're using. We can break down the science, and everybody will just and I would spread them around to all 13 the, other schools. What was the thing? Uh, all right, hold on, Fletchy just that Trent said. Richardson was using. It yeah, was, it was no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't Trent. Uh, Trent Richardson. Richardson. I'm talking about Ray Lewis. Ray Lewis got busted for like deer antler spray or something. Yes, the, and there were like a couple no, of Alabama like, players that uh, that were caught up. I think it was Courtney Upshaw and yeah. somebody else. Yeah, it was uh, of, Fletchy said I'm breaking into Bama's, but I ain't taking nothing. It's what I leave behind that they want to watch out for. <laughs> Atta boy, Fletcher. So Cam jumps in. He Boop, said, "Let's go." Pooping on the countertop. Pooping <laughs> on the countertop is always a classic move. Well, unless he's going for you know 
Unless he's setting explosives and whatnot, mm. which I, I can understand. No, that. no, Fletchy's not that guy. Jeez, that's uh, Fletchy's he's just more. Gonna, of, he's just gonna put his balls all over stuff. <laughs> Fletchy's more of the. Uh, Hang on, I shouldn't <laughs> judge Fletchy for that. Fletchy's not that guy. I would just be putting my balls on everything. <laughs> well, you just said you're about to take some steroids, man. Well, I am gonna so, steal all the steroids. That's I, I'll, I'll be honest, and I'd I like would to know what give them. Do. I would give them away to all thirteen. No, would, would you not look schools. for like uh, for for weight plant like the plans that they have as well? You they don't have any steroids. There are only so many ways to work out, Gary. That's like there, there are. This is not a sign. I, I know that people think that working out is a sign. This is not that complex. There are only so many ways to lift weights to make you stronger to be better at football. Fletchy said, "No, no, no. Definitely meant crap." Okay. Like, <laughs> all right. I would go step brothers and put my testicles on things. I don't know that there's any like. I don't know that there's anything that I want. But I've never been a big memorabilia guy. I'm, I'm not. Either. Like, I think I would love to go in and just see what the hell Mike Leach has got in his office. Like, I'd love to steal some of the pirate memorabilia. Oh, that guy's got a sword that I bet yeah, is bad. I, I bet there's some cool stuff in there. I, so one of my cousins used to be super into, like, ninja stars and samurai swords and whatnot. And he spent so much time. This is when he... Is, is that just, a cousin that I know? This is... I don't know that if he was just south of here that I, we hung out with a lot? Yes. Oh, yes. man, that guy's awesome. So... Caleb is... Uh, I wasn't going to put his I'll name call out there. Him. It's fine. I don't know how often he listens to this, but hey, I'm calling you out, buddy. He, he was Ninja way stars. into this stuff. That's like, a stepbrothers thing, too. Oh, big time. Ninja stars, samurai swords, nunchucks, like all this. And he had it. <laughs> and, and I'm talking thousands of dollars. I don't think he's got any of that stuff anymore. Because this was like after he graduated high school. Like he's he's a few years older than me now. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, he was way into that. I'm sure that Mike Leach, of all people, has got some really insane stuff in his office. Like, I, either that, or I'd, I'd like to see the the mechanism that Nick Saban has for like shutting the door after you come in. Like, because if you got somebody coming in your office and you just press a button under the desk that automatically shuts the door and locks it, like I think that'd be some gangster stuff. Yeah. But uh, but who else had that? Uh, what what was the guy from? God, what was it? Matt Lauer. Matt Lauer had one of those, and it was like super creepy. Oh yeah, the yeah. Dude that yeah. So from the the Today Show, that that's a little that's a little much. That uh, guy got a bad rap, I think. I, I don't know. Some of that stuff was pretty out there, man. Word of word on the street was, is, and listen, I don't I don't follow <laughs> all this. This is not the, the Me Too people don't come after me. But look, word on the street is, is that dude was like hung like a horse. Listen, if I was walking around like that, I'd probably show a lot of people too, whether they wanted to see it or not. All right, I wouldn't doubt that. I wouldn't doubt that. I'd, I'd show people. It wouldn't be, and it wouldn't be like a thing where I'm trying to pick these women up. It'd be like I'd show the dudes. It's for everybody. That just, I just never put just on show off everything. I just never put on pants. Uh, Cameron jumped in. He said, uh, "I bet that dude got off to the movie The Last Samurai." I, I would not doubt that. I would not doubt don't, that. Don't at all. besmirch the good name of Mike Leach on this show. We don't do that. No, I think he's talking about Caleb. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Caleb probably. Yeah. Caleb is a good dude. He's he's a lot of fun. I never thought when we uh, when we started this show today that we would be talking about the Last Samurai, Ninja Stars, Mike Leach's uh, collection of pirate memorabilia, etc. I bet if you broke into Tennessee, I mean, I'm in the construction world. I bet I could get like a bunch of bricks from. From uh, Butch's, Butch's old office. Butch's old office. Yeah, they probably still hadn't moved all those shit. Brick, brick by brick. Yeah, that crap's heavy, man. You, know, hey, you better believe that. All right, UFC 223 was last weekend. I, I didn't even watch the Daniel Poirier fight and, and whatnot this weekend. Um, that was on free TV. I did watch UFC 223, um, mainly because there was so much hype leading up to it. Like, it, they lost three fights. We talked about it uh, the Friday before last. Um... I, I wanted to talk about this because I found it incredibly ironic that leading up to that, Conor McGregor was the biggest villain in the history of the UFC. It was disgusting and unbelievable. And why in the world would we ever allow this guy to fight again, et cetera, et cetera. And then on Sunday, news leaks of a McGregor Mayweather UFC fight where there will be no kicking, no, like, it's going to be a boxing no, fight. Yeah, it's a boxing match in the, in the UFC, but with the four-ounce gloves instead of the eight-ounce gloves and whatever. So all this stuff goes on, and Dana White comes out, and he's talking incredibly positive about McGregor and how, yeah, I had a great conversation with him. We're really on the same page now. We're talking about all this stuff, and it just blows my mind that all of this stuff that we talked about, 
where, yes, it was absolutely disgusting what happened, but I'm still under the assumption that that was a, a staged thing that went incredibly wrong. So I don't think there's any way on that. And the reason he's positive now is because it's his job. Well, if you he's go, gotta sell well, these if, fights. If he's got to sell these fights. He's got to promote these fights. Yeah, see, UFC is becoming WWE. Uh, Dana's learning all of Vince's tricks. Look, Dana White I, was, we're, I just, we're Dana just White was at that. WrestleMania the next day. Like, well, I that, get doesn't, that. that doesn't mean anything, man. That doesn't mean anything. I'm with you. I, I don't think it actually meant anything. Here's, here's the reason why there's no way on earth I think that was staged. <laughs> we don't say stay woke. <laughs> you people. You people. Um, look, listen, hang on. So let me tell you why I don't think there's any way that was staged. Like if you go back and look at the video and you see him, he picks up a metal trash can and then he puts it back down and picks up a plastic one and throws it. Like, I don't believe the dolly was ever supposed to hit a window. I just don't buy that. Like, <laughs> go ahead. Give me, give me what My you're explanation say. is this, is because I actually know some people that live in the New York area that were going... To, to to this UFC event. And this was being built. Now, I don't follow the UFC super close, so I you know I could care less. I listened to the headlines, and that was about it. Um, this was being built as the best pay-per-view card from top to bottom that they've ever had. I, I don't think it was the best they'd ever had. I think it was it, the best they'd had in over a year. Well, okay, but it, it yeah. was built as a mega. Because like, they've had some it was, great It cards. was built as a mega card. Yeah. Okay? And then after... He busts these people's face all up with glass. It ended up being one of the crappiest cards they've ever put out there. And but again, nobody showed up. All these people paid for tickets. And I have people that I know that were there and was like, no, nobody there. But that, there were seats, not that many people. All it these seats were paid for. Well, I'll tell you this. So one of the and things that, that, that I heard about this week. That kills Dana. This is no, well, there's no, no they, way on earth that they wanted this to happen. Well, here, here's the difference, right? Habib... Like, this was his first headlining pay-per-view match. Right. McGregor had nothing to do right. with the guys that backed out on Habib, right? Yeah. Like, that's those were, like, Max Holloway right. and Tony Ferguson both were medical issues. That, and they I, had to back I get out. that. I understand that. But, but that's, one, that's one fight on a card that was loaded. To where you don't have everything in this one stars thing because this is his first big it was, it was main mainly, event fight. It was mainly two fights that everybody was super jacked about. And and that was Thug Rose and, both and those Joanna. Guys, both and, those guys are out. And yeah, well, the, the uh, Holloway and Ferguson, either one of those against Habib would have been must-see TV. Now, I ended up watching anyway, and I thought the fight was great. Now, Habib obviously dominated the whole time. It was fantastic. Um, but he, he let... He let Ray Janelle jump in and just stay up, right? Like, yeah. it, there were two rounds that he never even, like, yeah, I think he went for two takedowns in each round and couldn't get them. So he just stayed up, but, like, Ray Janelle never had a chance no. in that fight. It was never even close. And people started talking crap about Habib and whatnot. Look, that fight, Habib, like, he took it on a day's notice. He didn't even study his opponent, and he still wiped the floor with him. I understand it went to decision, so it disappointed some people that were expecting to see. Like, if it's the first time you've ever watched Habib fight, then yeah. you don't know what you're watching. Like, it, this is not a Conor McGregor kind of guy. No. He fights on the floor, and he's fantastic at it. However, it's not appealing, right? Like, that's the thing. When you see a bunch of dudes rolling around on the floor, it's just not appealing. No. That's what McGregor is great at. He keeps fights upright, and he, he fights. Like, he punches. That's what people want to see in UFC. That's what builds hype. That's what builds fame. You want to see knockouts. You don't want to see somebody get caught in an arm bar or a rear naked choke. Like, however, it is a humongous part of MMA because that's the only fight that McGregor lost was when Diaz fucking choked him out. Excuse my language. God. I got you. So, and, yeah, keep, I'm over here. Keep, keep drinking those whiskeys. Ah, either way. Uh, so they, they choke him out, and uh, but McGregor is still built up enough that he is... Like, he's just a hype guy, right? And there's so much hype behind McGregor that you want to see, the UFC guys want to see Habib against McGregor. Now, we'll, move, we'll transition from that into this. Habib, after he wins that fight, he doesn't call out McGregor. He calls out GSP. Now, I went back and I looked at all the numbers and all this kind of mess. And GSP had the most pay-per-view buys of anybody besides McGregor. However... He's only had one fight 
in the last four years. I was about to say in a while. He hadn't fought. He, he retired in 2013. He came back and fought late summer of 2016. Has not fought since. Is not interested in fighting. He, he won the belt when he came back for one fight. They asked GSP what he thought about Habib calling him out. And he came out and said, look, I think Habib's got more business to handle. The, he and UFC have some stuff that they need to handle before I even think about coming back to fight for another division, right? Because he, he won like the 185 division. I was just about to say, yeah. He'd have, he'd to, have to drop down 30 pounds. Yeah, I was about to say, he'd have to lose some weight. Or Habib would have to come up to him. Yeah. Either one. But either way, if Habib comes up to him, it's not a title fight anymore, I don't guess, they, uh, depending on whether or not Habib comes up to 185 to get his belt. But it's not his belt anymore because he gave it up after 30 days. So that's the thing. I, all of this is, is hilarious because I don't think Habib wants to fight McGregor. I don't think McGregor thinks that Habib is big enough for him to fight him. So what did they do? Like they, this My McGregor question Mayweather is, thing has to be... Forget about the McGregor Mayweather, Mayweather thing right now. Let me just ask you about McGregor and the UFC. Okay. If McGregor's just going to hold out until a star gets big enough, so McGregor's UFC career is over. I don't think so. I don't think it's over because I think he has to fight out this contract before he can move on to something else. Like, I think McGregor is big enough that he could do his own thing. However, UFC could sue him and get however much of that So why would that McGregor want. not stop playing this big well, dick thing and saying, well, you're not big enough to fight me, so I'm not going to fight you. You're a fighter. Get in the ring and fight somebody. That's what you do for a living. This is why I lost respect for, for Mayweather growing up, okay? It's because oh, he, he ducked when, everybody. When you handpicked opponents, you're no longer a fight. You're a fighter. You're supposed to fight people. You're supposed to be challenged. And he Agreed. either would handpick them when they were way too early and real green and he knew that he could capitalize off of every mistake they were going to make or he waited until they were way past their prime and couldn't fight anymore, and then he could beat him because he stayed in such good shape. And see, and so that's where I'm getting at with UFC. How does UFC take back control of of what they are doing? Like the only thing that they have is that they took McGregor's belts away, right? So McGregor, but they still no have the rights to McGregor, so he can't go do anything else, either. right? So, he so can't they've do got anything. control. They've got control. They can't make him fight, but they have control over what he can and can't do. How, and, and, how, let me, and let me tell you Is there you a way also, to ever make fighters fight? Yeah. Is there a way to well, do yeah, that? Yeah, money, money will do that. Like, it, money, so with money football teams, like, you have to play who's in front of you. That's right. Like, that's, that's how it works. Like, they make the schedule, in and then you go to the playoffs, in, and whoever wins yes. plays. In boxing, no, because there is no, there's no united fight. There is no united front. There's, like, seven different promotional things that, that you know, can, um, you know, that, that can make fights. There's there's like six different belts. And, That's right. And you can Nobody, fight with whoever you want yeah. to. It's all so, about money. It's, so there's no, no. It's all that. John jumps in and says, good show tonight. Thank you, John. We appreciate yeah. that. We um, appreciate everybody listening. Share that thing out, by the way, if you get a chance. <laughs> what, uh, but what, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, the, the reason UFC can with May Mayweather, it's just a waiting game. Because yeah. eventually this guy, we see the entourage he rolls in. That $100 million he made for Mayweather is being hemorrhaged. Pissed yeah, away right at an astronomical rate. Yeah. At some point in time, he's going to say, Dana, who do you want me to fight? You know why? Because he's got to get paid. Well, here's the thing. They are reworking his contract. And so that's what was supposed to be announced over the weekend was, hey, we've got a new contract with Conor McGregor. He's going to come back and fight so-and-so. Yeah. And that's what was supposed to happen. But they have to be able to have some ability to say, you don't get to big league folks and say, oh, I'm too big for that guy. I'm not fighting him. Because well, see, he started time, talking about that right after he beat Jose Aldo, yeah. right? Like or yeah. Jose Aldo. There's nobody else uh, for me. Yeah. He, well, no, he didn't say it was. It, it, it's where the whole red panty thing came from, like where he's talking about oh, when you get to fight me, and then of course the guy behind him's like, oh, I'll knock your ass out, and he's yeah. like, who the is that, yeah. right? And everybody starts laughing because he really didn't know who it was, yeah. but he would never be in danger of fighting that guy because he wasn't big enough, like McGregor is set up where Dana White knows he is the cash cow. He's already been through this with Ronda Rousey. Rousey was like, all right, I want to fight the biggest and the baddest. And then she got her ass beat twice. And then she was out. And then she's gone, and now WWE is making millions off of her. And we'll move to that here in a second. I don't know what UFC does at this point because they are trying like hell to build up these guys 
and nobody has the personality that McGregor does, and it turns everybody... Not, the diehards will always be there, right? Like, the deal is, you are averaging... I, I wrote an article last week on winningcureseverything.com. They're averaging like 220 paper, or two, 220,000 pay-per-views for the last year and a half, unless they have John Jones, or they have GSP, or any McGregor fight is going to do over middle. That's it. Now, if the numbers haven't come out for the Habib fight, I would imagine those will be up, probably to around 350,000, whatever. But Maybe. like, you're not, nothing is touching even 400,000. Yeah. Right? You you had Cyborg that did 350,000. And Habib was an undercard on that. Like, he had an actual good fight on that one. Um, but Habib is another one of those guys that he's pulled out of four fights. And then guys are always pulling out of fights against him. You're trying to schedule, like, everybody wants to see Habib against Ferguson. They've tried it four times. Four different times in the last four years. And every Ferguson's pulled out of two. Habib has pulled out of two. Habib pulled out of two fights against Cowboy Cerrone. Like, you never know if you're actually going to get him in the ring. McGregor is literally the most, like, dependable guy that you can get. It's not a good thing, by the way. That's not a good thing. I, I'll when, admit when, that right when now. When McGregor's the, like, the guy you can depend on the most to show, not, not to bring numbers, but to show up and actually do his job. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where that's, it becomes a problem. That's a problem. So, so <laughs> UFC is in, in like... People have talked forever, and Dana, of course, said last year, 2017 was a great numbers year for UFC, blah, 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 blah. Look, UFC is in major league trouble. They Their owners bought them for $4 billion in 2016, right when McGregor was at his peak. Everything he was doing was gold. Well, was UFC, made, UFC made more money off of the McGregor-Mayweather fight than they made total last year. But that was dumb. That was their, Look, that ain't Dana White's fault that these people are stupid. He sold when he had a star because Dana knows his business. And here's the thing. Everybody's pushing the panic button today. It might take a year or two. Dana will get another star. And here's what, what, because it used what's to not take happen, long. What's going to happen? Oh, well, how long did it take to replace Chuck Waddell? Because it took no, several years. It wasn't that oh, long. It took because, a couple no, they, of years. They, because he still Chuck Waddell wasn't even that big back then. Like oh, he was big. We gonna disagree but he, on that. No, he wasn't as big as what McGregor is. Well, no, but no, but, but is. we have social media. But we Waddell have was not. We had. I mean, you're talking about TV is totally different today I, than I, it I was then. I understand that. I understand. So that. you can't compare that. Look, Liddell was huge. Tito Ortiz was big. It's huge. And then you had Brock Lesnar. And then you had GSP, and you had like but, there were so many. We're talking ones. about Anderson years. Spider Silva was massive. Yes, at oh, one no, point. Yes. But those were years between one another. But but nobody has come up to replace because that's, that's right. a lot of those fighting at the same time. Like a lot of these are not fighting at the same time. You had McGregor and Rousey that were like your big name draws. You got John Bones Jones who can't keep from doping before a fight, so he'll come back, he'll fight for one fight, and then he's gone for another year plus. And then, yeah, they but have nobody no else them. is worth anything. Like all of their champions have no personality, no nothing, and they they can't help that because it's a real sport. Because it's a real sport. It's right. not a, it's not sports entertainment. It is a real sport. That's the difference between it and wrestling. So here's wrestling the thing: is you, sports entertainment. Do you not worry about like the the highest numbers that you've ever gotten, and no. you just go and, and you you focus keep, on being the best sport that you yes. can be? Yes, that's, that, I, I because, agree with that. Because when you start to get cute and try to manufacture, yeah, things. manufacture things. When you try to gimmick stuff, you're going to a look gimmick, and then people are going to begin to question what you're doing and how you're doing and, it. And they're already and so, doing that. And so much of what you do comes from Vegas. Yeah. And if you begin to become like wrestling, you lose Vegas. Oh yeah. Because Vegas won't allow people to gamble on something that is fixed. Agreed. They are going so so well. No, not you not true. well. It's okay. So you, Vegas won't allow you to bet on like WWE, but obviously online sports books and yeah. whatnot will let you do anything. But but the the, so. the thing is is you just keep doing what you're doing, and eventually a star will come. It's just going to happen. They didn't they didn't find Connor under a rock. They kept doing what they were doing. Connor was fighting all around the world, and he got good enough to to get a shot. And he made the most of and his shot. And he came in and he started talking. But and no, he was no. Talking. See, I disagree with that. He, he, well, he did had come to in. Win. Yeah, but it, had he got his ass whooped on fight one, 
We never hear from Connor again. Okay. Lots of guys are great in front of the camera, and then they get hit in the mouth, and they're no longer good in front of the camera see, because they don't get to be put on the on that camera. Is, that is one thing that McGregor will talk, and then he'll back it up, and yes. that's what people are into. Other people that try and talk, and they end up getting you, their ass beat. You have to learn difference. that this is a real sport. But the majority, 99% of the fighters out there want to stay humble, or they won't say something that is so outrageous that it gets played over and over on SportsCenter, right? Like, that's that's how this thing works, because they understand at any point, one shot can knock them out. That's right. McGregor was at such a high point when he lost to Diaz, Didn't and it was such a, a big fight for him because he jumped up two weight classes in, like, six days that's right. that people understood him getting beat. That's right. And that's what made the McGregor-Diaz 2 fight even bigger like that's still the biggest UFC pay per view ever. Was one point six million. Like so, I just I just think you stay the course. You keep doing what you're doing. You don't try to manufacture things. You don't try to make it gimmicked. You just keep doing what you're doing with the best fights you can get. Because what, I will tell you, you this: is there was a time calling out people afterwards. There was see, I just think like Bones I'm was calling a, out Brock Lesnar. I ain't a fan of that. I, I think so Bones wrong. Bones get off the dope and get off the get off the steroids and well, and, and Lesnar's even got to get off the dope. I mean, it's a, so you know. So, but but my thing is 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 you keep doing what you're doing because if they put good fights out there, but these guys are boring. But if it, but if you can show a badass fight, yeah, people will show up to watch a badass fight. I agree. I agree. All right, let's uh, let's jump on to the next topic. I watched WrestleMania 34. I'm not gonna lie. I watched for Ronda Rousey. It is the first time in probably ten, years, maybe maybe more than a decade, that I have watched a WWE event. What'd you think? I thought it was spectacular. Like I, I'm not a big fan of, of WWE in and of itself, but like I know all the characters and whatnot because. Every sports show in the country talks about this crap That's right. because everybody's got sons or, or whatever that are into this, right? Once you've got a child that, like a little boy, anyway. If you, if you have a son that's between twelve and well, a son that's between 19, five, yeah, and, or maybe and yeah, younger. sixteen or whatever, like because once you get to like seventeen, eighteen, like, like it's it kind of loses. You, it you, did with you, us. You anyway. just want to see boobs. Yeah, like you're not worried, and, and obviously you can get that with WWE now. Uh, yeah. Like you, you got your women fighters that are that people are into. Um, but look, like, I, my question is this. Like, I thought it was great. I thought the, the whole spectacle of I mean, there were 78,000 people in the Superdome for this. Like, it was massive. And people are chanting, and they're doing all this. And then you get to the headline fight, and people are booing. It's terrible. And they, they don't want anything to do with it. And, like, I didn't think the fight was that bad. It, I mean, obviously, it was super fixed. I, all of these are fixed. But, like... The event lasted, like, four and a half, five hours. Yeah, it was a long That's time. That's a problem. It was a long like that, that, time. That's a problem. That's a criticism that needs to be made. Well, you just got so much going on. Like, yeah, you, you, got, you got less is more. Fifty matches in this. Thing. It's like every fighter that's ever fought in WWE yeah. ends up fighting in WrestleMania, and it's just ridiculous. You got it's a whole weekend thing. Like, and so I've got friends that actually went down, and Friday night they've got like a big uh, the, the WWE Hall of Fame induction, yep. whatever. Then Saturday night you got your uh, NXT, which is like the. the the wrestling minor league, they got a big event for that, and then you've got WrestleMania on Sunday night, and then you've got WWE Raw on Monday night from the same spot, which is bananas to me that it draws the numbers that it does. It's crazy. Like you will not and, find and a that's, show, and that's on TV for like four hours. It's it's three hours. It's like three seven hours. to ten. Yeah, and people watch it like it is. It, there's th they average three million. I, I, got, I was huge in the wrestling growing up. You will not find another sporting no. event that averages three million every week. Per, every week, every Monday per show. Like college football, ain't a chance. No. Like, but this one, they've got a, a Monday night show, and it's it, it's a Tuesday night or Thursday night that they do like Thursday. SmackDown Thursday. 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 Monday, Thursday. Th Mondays and Thursdays. Yeah, it's a Mondays and Thursdays. Uh, it, and and I, it, somebody correct us if we're wrong. But I this whole thing, I, I'm curious because of that headline fight. How does Vince McMahon keep drawing viewers if he keeps hyping up wrestlers that people hate? Oh, you gotta have heels. You gotta have that. That's what yeah, makes but, but I'm, I'm that's you, what makes like, wrestling great is because you've got bad you've got real bad guys because you can manufacture them to be but, bad but guys. But do people like uh, so do people actually like Brock Lesnar? Like oh, yeah. normally you've got a Oh yeah. The only people that don't like him are UFC guys. 
But Vince McMahon don't give a crap. But no, I, I didn't feel like anybody really gave a crap about. Okay, here we go. Chris jumps in. He says SmackDown's on Tuesday. All right. See, I, obviously, I when think did that change? Chris, if you can respond, did SmackDown used to be on Thursday? I thought I remembered that. I know but that I might be wrong. I ain't that damn wrong. Um, so. My viewing schedule will change because I've got a little boy that's on the way. In 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 five six years, I know he's going to be into wrestling because we were into wrestling. I was into wrestling at that age. You and I, yes. that's, we've talked about it before. That's what that's how you and I connected. That's right. Like when we were what, second grade. Yes, we watched. Gary, we, Gary was my first friend when I moved to Auburn. We would hang out. How sweet is that? <laughs> we would hang out and no, watch wrestling. Would I would kill him half the time. <laughs> <laughs> prove it. Prove it. Every time prove it says it. every time it says prove it, I keep no, we, thinking this is gonna be a crime of fashion. We would TV. we would get together and watch WrestleMania. Yeah. We would watch you the know, the, the SummerSlam yeah. and, and Rage what, what was the Survivor cage, Series Survivor yeah, Series. Yeah, all that. So Rage in the Cage or whatever the hell it was called way back then. Either, either way. How in the world how in the hell does do these wrestlers do a Sunday now it's only once a month, but a Sunday pay per view a Monday well, no, it's and like then it's a Tuesday? Once every like three once, or four months. No, it? no, no. They have a pay-per-view every month. Same way the UFC does? Yeah. I don't know that that's... Uh, UFC ripped off wrestling. Man, I don't, that's crazy. Like, I, I couldn't see people paying 50 bucks a month. They don't. That. They pay $10 a month for, for the WWE for the channel. App, what are you talking right? about? Yeah. Well, it's not an app. It's a channel. Well, no, there's there's an app. Well, there is an app, but yeah, you don't have you don't have to have cable. But if you have like it's like TV, direct direct over the air. Yeah, right? well, but if you have Direct TV or if you have Xfinity, it's a, just a channel. Uh-huh. I I've tried. I, I can't understand like if people. All right, so one, I did have people talking to me about uh, how can you watch that? It's all fixed, and I'm like, what well, you watch? But it's entertainment. You, yeah, it's entertainment. Like it, you watch like TV shows on ABC. Yeah, and all that's been scripted. That's right. So like you don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Whenever you watch a wrestling event, it's just like it's they just know. entertainment. Like they, they know, know. We, but we but we don't see everybody and their mother thought that Roman Reigns was going to win. Like I was told that numerous times because Brock is going back to the UFC, right? And then all of a sudden, bam! Right, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, it was on Thursday. Chris jumps in. Yes, it was on Thursday when SmackDown went live about a year and a half ago. Uh, they switched to Tuesday. Okay. See, I had no idea. See, I didn't know they switched. That's that. even more incredible that they draw people in for Sunday night, Monday night, and Tuesdays. That's like, that, is, that would only be once a month, but then it's every week it's Monday, Tuesday. That is, and the Monday show man. used to be an hour, and, and then it went hours. to two, and now it's three. See, I got out once it started getting real long because my mama wouldn't let me just keep watching. Yeah, three hours on a Monday night is pretty, I got pretty intense. Um, I was, but yeah, I was raised by a mother who hit, and you don't get to just sit in front of the TV. <laughs> I just I, I haven't understood how this works, like how they continue. I, I actually have a philosophy about that. I think that it was set up for Reigns to win, but then once word got out, see Vince McMahon's a genius when it comes to stuff. Once word got out that it's an absolute lock, we already well, know and, the ending. And the crowd is already booing. They yeah. don't want- we, we already know the ending. That's when Vince says, flip it on. Flip it on. I am curious about this. Because I- his response is, is, Let's do something that they're not expecting tonight. I'll figure it out tomorrow. The the rest of it was all right. So Roman Reigns got split open by an elbow by Lesnar. Like immediately? Right? No, no, this wasn't immediate. This was like later on in the match. It was it was wet because this was a Did, long match. I know that, but didn't the match last like thirty minutes after he got his wig split? No, it was uh, maybe like five minutes after that. Okay. It, it wasn't very long at all. It was uh, it, so the fight itself was like maybe twenty minutes. Listen, to the podcast. Uh, first fifteen minutes, like it. it they threw people like they threw each other around. They threw each other into tables, like all this kind of mess, right? So all this stuff is going on, and he gets uh, he gets his wig split with an elbow. And I thought that WWE had a rule in place where you can't do that anymore. Like you you can't draw blood anymore because it's supposed to be a family event. And then you have Brock dropping an f bomb right in the middle of the ring, <laughs> and like all this stuff. They probably just, have those rules for the network TV, but it's but it's pay per view. Yeah, okay. And I'm going to bet all things go out on pay-per-view. I haven't watched one well, in a there, while. There was a, so probably, so they, they talked about how this whole thing, uh, there was a big it. argument between Vince and Lesnar like when they got done with it, and Lesnar was upset because people were booing during the match. Like, nobody was happy about that match. No. And that's what I'm curious about. Like, it, do, did people actually watch the match? Were they curious? Like, did they want to watch it, or like, were they just upset that that was the headliner 
and they'd rather have somebody else that they actually enjoy. This is the this is why wrestling is as big as it is though. Is even if it's something that everybody hates, they're, they're still, still showing up. That's bananas. We're all still showing up because they support the product, which is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, that's that's a big thing. Is it, they they've got diehards, diehards, and UFC has got diehards, and, but it is such a small number. And we're now in a thing where you're talking like third generation diehards. So oh, I yeah. I got most of my information about this um, main event. This not just main event, but all of WrestleMania from listening to Cousin Sal talk about it. Well, it's a, and, you talk about third generation. Uh, before you jump into Cousin Sal, like my dad. When I was younger, he would always tell me about uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka, yeah. right? And we talk guys. about Jerry Wrestler or Jerry uh, Jerry Lawler, and we talk about like uh, just all these old guys, mm -hmm. Jeff Jarrett and, and whatever, yeah, uh, Dusty Rhodes, Ric Flair, and they had been doing it forever. And Dad was super into this stuff. So then I jump in, and we, it, so it, my wife is doing uh, she's steam cleaning right now. Oh. <laughs> Man. So I, I don't think the people can hear that, but we can hear it. Uh, either way, there so like, there's, there's all these big name wrestlers from way back when, and then you and I get interested in it, and it's Hulk Hogan, and then, you know, obviously we, Andre the Giant was like on the tail end. Of I that. would I would consider our generation of wrestling the glory days. Oh, it was Big Vince, Boss Man Vince, and the yeah, Mountie Vince and McMahon, the Painter Vince and McMahon Million Dollar Man and that, Jake the I, Snake yeah. and Macho Man Randy Savage yeah. and uh, the Ultimate Warrior. And you know, Ric well, Flair was still doing his thing. Right. Like we, no, there were amazing. Sting, yeah. WCW, yeah, yeah, no, and I mean, that was WCW, was, and then it, WWE bought them. That, no, yeah, Sting still, became still even part of it. Yeah. So there you go. Chris jumps in. I think Lesnar's boring anyway. He only uses like two to three moves. The only move that I saw was like he kept saying Suplex City, bitch, and that cracked me up because I'm like, I don't think Suplex is really hurt. Like I, it didn't look like they actually was hurt. And then like the F5 thing that he was doing. I didn't really. That's, his, that's, his, that's supposed to be his finishing move. Right. And it, but he did so it like he, seven times. Yeah, it was five times that he did. Yeah. And then the sixth is the one that finally, like, you know, knocked him out. Or whatever. So, so but none of them actually look like it would hurt. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, if you want, if you want, we can keep the camera rolling and I can try to do one right now. No, I'm all good. <laughs> I mean, we just. Then, then you can tell us, does it hurt or not? I mean, I just. I'd, I'd like to get it. So there's a, a say, famous guy, Dustin just, Starr. That just I'd say like prove to, it one more time and I'll have five you on this table. <laughs> <laughs> I get Kurt on the phone. I'll FaceTime Kurt. I said prove it one time. Oh, one oh, time, and that's it. It doesn't matter. And you got so fired so, up about that. So mad. Oh, man, we got all sorts of people fired up about we that. It was great. Stop, I thought we were going to stop being friends. It was It was fantastic. 20-something you know. years of my so, life. So the diehards and whatnot, third generation, Cousin Sal. Tell me, tell me about Oh, no, Sal. he was just talking about how they thought that it was actually not scripted for Lester to win, but... When what's his name's face got broken open, he was like, they thought the way the refs like reacted and everybody kind of reacted around it, like that was not planned. Yeah, and to a point where he was losing so much blood, they were like, all right, we got to just end this match. Oh, so, I, I was so Lesnar, Lesnar just end it and be done, and then we'll figure out. So that was cousin Sal, who he talks on his podcast all the time about wrestling. His sons are huge fans. They're diehards. See, they, this they is what I was pointing out. Yeah, sports shows talk about this because yes. their kids watch it. Oh yeah. So then well, you know, and Cousin Sal's out. a huge wrestling fan. Don't get me wrong. Well, the the blood thing, by the way. But he thinks, so I watched it when he when he got when he got hit, and I'm when you talk about blood pouring yeah. out of somebody, like I don't I, if if they had planned it, I don't I think they planned it to be as bad no. as it was because I'm telling you and. Lesnar has done this before That's right. with, uh, what's the guy's name, Randy Orton. Mm -hmm. So Randy Orton uh, took an elbow, and, and they showed pictures that, like, hey, by the way, this yeah. was not scripted. This no. was not supposed to, because he had a split. And, and at and the end of it, it was so bad. So Cousin Sal's philosophy was is they, they made an adaptation in the middle of it. Like, like, all right, we just need to end this fight, and you need to win, and then we'll figure out what to do later. Because when something like that happens, your first priority – these guys really are entertainers. All this stuff really is scripted. But if something happens, because you really are beating on each other to an extent, outside of what we plan, we got to get out of it, and then we got to we got to we got we'll just figure it out in the next. Well, story the thing is that that Reigns came back even after getting split and like did one of the the spears or whatever, yeah. and like went for a pin on Lesnar, and that's and that's when everyone out. thought that was all right. He started believing real bad. 
But he but he does he hits the spear and he pins him, but he kicks out of it and then he gets another F five and he bends range yeah, and then it's over. And it, it was the most anticlimactic ending that you've ever seen. And like it, it, that's the thing that always blows my mind is like these big pay per views and then there's like that's it. But, uh, but like, that, you just you just caught a bad one. I think you just caught a bad one. Well, I, see, I don't think it was that bad. I think like maybe that match was. But, like that, but, little, that, but that's what I'm saying. Like you called the weird. main event that was that kind of classically. All my wrestling friends that do watch this stuff was like, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't that great of a finish. But all the rest of the matches leading up to it were really good. Like and it was the, a the good. Rousey one, I plan on talking a lot about Rousey. Uh, well, not a lot, but just bring it up. But like the Rousey one was incredible. Like I was incredibly surprised. At, at her and her personality and everything that happened out of that. And, like, Stephanie McMahon is great yeah. at this. She's a perfect heel. Triple H was fantastic because he's waving the ref off. He's like, I'll fight a girl. I don't care. And Rousey, like, picks him up and body slams him. It, it was just everything you, about you that sell. fight. Yeah. So no, They had, and what was it, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle was the dude that she fought with. There were professionals yes. surrounding Rousey in that fight. Oh and, yeah, and it was they great. they put her up against three of the best that have been in the business their entire lives. Like she couldn't have fought yeah, for her, her first fight. Her somebody support who's system been, was fantastic. Somebody who's been doing this for two or three years. Yeah, like like even had she fought like Ric Flair's daughter or whatever, like she hasn't been fighting that long. Her dad is a legend, but she's not yeah. a legend. Or what, what's the girl that, that Flair's daughter fought? It was like. Yeah, and, I, I don't and, know her name. And but Sura. And, yeah, same and, thing. And Kura. Like, they Kura, needed whatever. they needed Kurt Angle, who's been around for decades, and then they needed Triple H and Stephanie, who have grown up in this business for decades. And they understand how it works. How to sell. Yeah. They needed somebody to help them sell. So. No, I, all, all of the, look, uh, the chick, like, and my favorite one is Alexa Bliss. Like, and she, now, she went heel on this whole thing. I think people that, like, really liked her, and then she started talking crap about the fat girl or whatever. Like it, so people were split. It was like, oh man, we've always liked her, but she's being really mean to this overweight girl. And it, I mean, it was just not. But she's like, she's like four foot nine. Like she's tiny and blonde and pretty attractive. Like I ain't gonna lie. Like I, I like Alexa. Hey, I followed her on Instagram, man. I was like, all right, I'm in. Like I'm sold on this. So let me let me give you let me give you a project. And if any of you outside in TV land hadn't done, I'm gonna plug something. This is about wrestling. So I watched the Andre doc. Okay. That uh, that Bill Simmons and them did. For I have HBO. not watched it yet. I watched the Paterno thing. I haven't I'm, watched the Andre I'm, Giant, but so it's this got is an insane actual, reviews. This is an actual documentary. Yeah, Paterno's a movie. Um, probably could have been a documentary. I've actually listened to the guy that directed that. Yeah, and and had to do with all of that. I've done listened to two different interviews that he's done. That I'm going to guess one was the before. Simmons show. One was Bill Simmons yeah, show with Al Pacino. With Al Pacino, yeah. yeah. I don't know anything. If if Al's talking to anybody, I'm I'm going to find that. Um. And the other one was an interview he did on, on a, the Tony Kornheiser show, two shows that I watch and listen to religiously. Um, but the doc, if you were a wrestling fan, like Andre, you didn't have to be a wrestling fan. Andre was just, I mean, this mythological creature that, that kind of came to life. He was the last great giant. It, I'm going to speak a little bit from, from the heart here. If you were a fat kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, like you, like you, I worship that guy. Yeah, like I, I saw him and I thought he's bigger than everybody else, and he's treated different than everybody else, and I'm bigger than everybody else. Yeah, and I'm treated different than everybody else. I remember you were and, you and were in love was, with that guy. Yeah, and it was just something that just kind of it it meant a lot, and it was cool to hear the backstory. Um, Bill Simmons has his podcast with the director that did it. Uh, after you watch the doc, download that podcast and listen to it. Um, they talk about how like Vince McMahon was there. They, the w, uh, WWE has never like let a third party come in and do anything like this. Yeah, and they were having to sell to him why you need a third party. And Vince was like, "I would I would let you do it with anybody else, but I'm very sensitive about Andre. Like the Andre story has to be told right, and it has to be told with respect and reverence." And the level of... I, I had heard that they, like, before Vince would actually okay it, they had to have the whole thing done. No. no that's, not, that's not true. That's not I true. I haven't listened to anything. The, guy, the, director, the director had to interview with Vince a couple of times, and he, like, went into the meeting, and he had been coached up about Vince. And Vince big-leaked him. Like, 
Like he sat at a table with four chairs and there were three people in the room and Vince stared at the empty chair the entire time. He never looked at him. He never looked at the other, like he, he did the, I'm the God show guy. Yeah. And, and the guy at one point makes a statement about how, you know, you know, I don't really follow wrestling. I'm not really a wrestling fan. He said, but I think that's what makes me the best person to do this is because I'm going to tell an honest documentary story. I'm not going to get lost in the nostalgia, but I'm also not going to talk about a lot of the folklore stuff that isn't real. I want it to be a documentary, not a movie. And therefore, all of the, um, like, you know, hyperbole that's been around about Andre. Right. He said, if I don't have first person encounters telling me about it, I don't care that somebody heard from somebody else and they heard the same story from 20 different people. If I don't have one of the people that heard it, saw it, or watched it happen, it didn't It didn't go in the dock. Okay. And, and Vince was like, so Vince big league team the whole time, he felt very uncomfortable. He walked out of there thinking, no we're, way I saw we're, this. we're not gonna make this movie. And then word got back to Simmons people that Vince loved him. And he didn't back down from his, his, his stances on everything, but anyway. I'm getting a little bit into the weeds and, and too much inside baseball here, but it, it was just it was just unbelievably well done. And and if you like I said, I grew up an, a little bit of a, an outsider when I was a young kid because I was so much bigger than everybody else. And I just I found my place in the world with Andre. And it, it meant a lot. And I, I, I challenge everybody, go watch it. Go find it. Rip off somebody else's HBO Go. Password, Whatever you got to do to see it, but go it, see it. I, I, I just find it and, and, and watch it. It's it's really entertaining. It How really long is, is it? about an hour and a half. Not not too long. No, no, it's not too long. That's reasonable. The, That's about the the length of an episode of Game of Thrones next season. That's right. So, um, but it was really really well made. HBO do, always does a really good job of this. No, they do. And the, that's the Paterno thing. I, like that, you haven't seen so it. Yet, I, but it's I on my DVR, it. but I didn't know how kid friendly it was. My kids it's, have been around uh, a lot, so it's I want to. Okay, it's so I want to wait until I can watch it without him. I was able to watch the Andre doc with him there, and like my oldest daughter was just like, "Oh man, was he a real giant?" I was like, "Yeah, baby. I mean, he was. Like, he had a genetic yeah. disposition that made him bigger than everybody else." Yeah. Um, my favorite part in the whole thing was Vince telling a story about Andre's proudest moment was this, these two things kind of contradict one another, but they're pretty great. Andre's proudest moment, if you look back at his whole career, was he never hurt anybody because he had the ability to oh, yeah. hurt anybody. And then Hulk Hogan told stories about how there were guys that Andre hated because it was always the loud mouth guys that just ran their yak. When they did it on camera, they usually did it off camera in the back. And whenever they had to fight Andre, they would always like go to Hogan and the other guys that were buddies with him and was like, hey, is Andre going to be cool tonight? And they were like, I don't know. And then they get him in the ring and Andre would like, he'd beat on him. He'd but it, but it him. wouldn't be like, he didn't No, he didn't if, he, if he wanted to end someone's career he and, or take their life, he could have. And he, he was really prideful of the fact that he, he, never, he never did. But Macho Man Randy Savage, say that. no. Macho Man Randy Savage? He hurt Roger Man Randy Savage. He hurt his feelings. He beat the hell out of him. <laughs> Great stories. Um, the the last real John that we'll ever have in our lifetime. Yeah, he was uh, he was fantastic. I mean, that's it, the tail end of, of his whole thing was was when you and I were getting into it. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, it it was. You'll never see anything like that again. Like wrestling now is is so different from what it was back then. But at the same time, it's. It's a lot of the same kind of stuff. I mean, they build up characters. They, uh, you, you see different types of people. Well, now, a lot of it is personality. Now. And they'll be they'll be they'll be a superstar for a while, and then they'll turn heel. Yeah. And that that is I mean that's kind of the way. If you're good enough, long enough, eventually you're gonna have to be a bad guy. You'll live. Excuse me. You'll live to be a bad guy, and uh, and it's it's pretty entertaining. It's a Vince McMahon can tell a story. That guy can write a story, and he has surrounded himself with people that know how to entertain and write a story. Because that's all this thing is. I'm with you. So let's jump off that. Let's jump off long WWE. Time, long time getting a little nostalgic. Go ahead. Let's see. I want to talk to you about cockfighting. <laughs> all right. Uh, let me let me read the the story to you. Okay. 
Uh, a search warrant served at a location in Lancaster led to the seizure of more than 1,000 game fowl that were being bred and raised to take part in cockfighting. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department announced Wednesday. The seizure was made on Monday in the 6300 block of East Avenue E, according to Deputy Tracy Kerner of the Sheriff's Information Bureau. Personnel from the L.A. County Department of Animal Care and Control, with the assistance of members of the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, Los Angeles, responded to the location in order to examine, care for, and take possession of the animals. The birds are made to fight to the death, and those that suffer injuries are allowed to go untreated and sometimes simply thrown in the trash, Kerner said. Uh, having animals fight to death, along with letting them go untreated, is not only cruel, but oftentimes goes hand-in-hand -hand with gambling, drug dealing, and other legal activities. You don't say. Uh, according to Kerner, who said several people were detained, this is what cracked me up, but no arrests were made. The, here we go, Cam jumps in on Facebook, I grew up by a cockfighting farm in San Diego. Get, are you serious? I, I, wish, I wish we could bring him on right now. Uh, the investigation is ongoing, Kerner said, and anyone with information was urged to contact the sheriff's, uh, blah, 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 blah. Look, if I had read that this happened in, in lower Alabama, in South Alabama, yeah. Or in Arkansas, Mississippi. or in Mississippi, Down or, the Delta, or, or just, in Louisiana, just or wherever, yeah. anywhere in the South, yeah. I would totally get it. That's right. That's Los why it, Angeles. Did, it, it did not shock me when Michael Vick got busted in the middle of nowhere, Georgia. Well, it's, no, this was in Virginia. Virginia, Virginia whatever, yeah. yeah. Country. Like, country. Country. And, and I understand that there's a lot of rural area in California. Not, However, not in L.A. In Los Angeles? Not in L.A. We listened to a, a, a pot. Who was the guy that we... Uh, Cameron said it was on the Indian reservations in San Diego. Okay, see, that would be... That's sense. San Diego. That's San Diego. That's a lot. There's actually land around yeah, this San is Diego. Like Los concrete Angeles jungle is completely Los different. Angeles. I'm, I'm super confused into how you could hide a thousand. I don't think they hide them. I how think, in the world do you get away with it? Like, one, how are there no arrests involved here? Because the people left behind, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to tell you exactly how this works. The people that were left behind to get caught were the, I'm going to bet they're all poor immigrant handlers that whose responsibility are is to handle and train the cock. The, and, the, and they the, have the, no idea. The, the roosters, no. No, not that they have no idea, but these, these people, but they're, they're these not people are not the guys in charge. And I'm going to bet that everybody that lives around where these things are, are raised in this, you know, concrete jungle apartment, whatever, I'm going to bet it's a project area, and I'm going to bet they're all scared to death. I'm going to bet that there's probably some so, but like gang point, activity would, around. Oh, 100%. I, I love this quote where it says, uh, uh, like, having animals fight to death along with letting them go untreated is not only cruel, but oftentimes goes hand in hand with gambling, <laughs> drug dealing, and other legal activities. Like yeah, like uh, we, duh. we knew we knew that's why they were doing it. What, what the human mean, my, race. My, my daughter always says, "Duh." The like, human, look, <laughs> we're we're some we as people we're, we're we're capable of being some sorry sons of bitches. All right, we're we're, we're, we're some that. sorry people. But I don't know that people are just like letting animals fight for nothing. Like somebody's gonna profit off this. Oh, thing. absolutely. Here we go. Uh, Cam said they had tarps on top so you couldn't see it and acted like they were dog kennels. Like at, at that and, point though, like, yeah, even still, like you still got dogs involved. Like you know that there's a live animal in there, going on. The like, people that lived around there that would have been able to report it were not going to be the people that report it. Yeah, probably not. It's just it blew my mind when I read the story because I was like, really? There's cockfighting in L.A. Which I get it. Like I get that people will bet on anything. That's right. Like the the one thing that surprises me, like I bet on on football games that like I look at numbers. Like I I that you, try I make that my you best know educated you can't watch guess. this game. You couldn't find it on TV if you had to. But if you think you have an edge, you'll make a play. Exactly. That's I what you. I always do with football. It's what I, I do you. with basketball. Like I, I study numbers. I figure this stuff out, and then I I make my best educated decision. I don't go like it's why I could never bet on horses, right? Because like. I, I don't watch horse racing. Oh. If I'm going to a dog track, I'm not like. You, so this is this is where we're different. But I was raised, I was raised by a man, I love him to death, Uncle Ouija. God rest his soul. <laughs> he. Oh, by the way, Cam said everybody knew, but no one said anything. It was only right. 15 years ago, though. That's right. Yeah. But nobody, nobody will say anything because you don't really know. No, you know. But you, yeah, you shoot him up. Okay, so everyone knew, but no one said anything. Yeah, because right. you don't want to get shot. Yeah. 
So, so Uncle, Uncle had, Luigi. had a great uncle who used to take him to the dog track of the South Wind. And I was like, you like watching the dogs? I wouldn't bet one nickel on one effing dog, okay? I go to watch the horses. Because in horse racing, if you actually know how to handicap, you can find great edges. Right. Unbelievable edges. Dogs, no. Now, Felica will tell us everything about horse, horse racing. racing. I'm telling you. He knows everything. If, Chris Felica from, from it, ESPN. We got to get takes, him back in. It takes an unbelievable man. Yeah, we got the, I mean, we, we it's the first uh, Saturday of May coming up. Well, it all depends on when when little dude gets here. <laughs> it depends well, on when my son gets here. I'm, That's well, whether I would get him in. They're going yeah. to run the Kentucky Derby whether he's here or not. Uh, so. Agreed, agreed. We, we'll but, have to figure out whether but I'm or not just telling you, you and I can be you, together. People who do this for a living will actually tell you one of the best gambling odds. If you know how to handicap the jockeys and the horses, you can find edges everywhere. That's interesting. See, and now I do not know how to do that. I don't know how I to do have, that. I have pissed away large sums of money and small sums of money betting on horses and dogs. And see, and that's the thing. Like if I'm if I walk, but I'm into, a two man. If I walk, say, all right, so we're in Memphis, right? You go to Southland Greyhound Park over in West Memphis. If we go in over there, I can't bring myself to put money on a dog, not knowing. Whether or not it's a decent bet, oh, I, because you you can't like I think they give you some stats on them. Yeah, but it, but, you don't know, but you don't know. But you don't know what like you, if if you're not in on the game, you don't know what that means. No, right? no, no, no. Otherwise, it's just throwing money at, at whatever. Well, like, well, it's, it's, one day, it's one the day same thing as gambling on like a roulette table or something like that, right? Where you you spin the wheel, and it's like red. One day you your know? son will be big enough and your wife will let you out of the house and we'll go over there and we'll bet on some dogs. All right, all right. We, we we'll, piss, that. we'll piss a couple $20 away on some dogs. All right, all right. Because here's the nice serious. thing is you can you can bet like two bucks. Well, it's the same thing with cockfighting, like, right? Like, like, nah, you ain't, gonna get a little, you ain't getting a little booklet on it. Oh, no, no, there's no, yeah. This, you just, you're just looking at them like, oh, that one's big yeah. and that one's little. Yeah, but then you see yeah. the little one end up this like one, taking somebody out. This one looks crazy and this one may be a little slow. Yeah. And yeah, that's what you have to figure out. It's like you, you got to look at them a little bit and say, ah, feed these things go with this one. Feed these things some meth. <laughs> that's about what happened, right? <laughs> anyway. All right, we have gone super we, long. We may end up cutting this into two. We do not condone cockfighting or animal fighting in any way, shape, form, or fashion. No, not a chance. Not a chance. Nor do we condone gambling. But if you oh, do have to wrong. gamble, we, if you do have to gamble, we condone. Uh, here, I'm going to go in and spin this. So as Chris just told you, bet on mybookie.ag if you have to bet. If you got to put in money, if you got to do something, bet on the NBA playoffs, bet on Major League Baseball. Look, if you really know what you're doing on baseball, you can make some money. There's edges to be made. Like it, 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 in that situation, you just bet on winners. It's a lot easier that way. And if you think that a team is good enough to win by more than one run, like your lines are almost always going to be, you know, one run, one and a half runs, half, you know, whatever. It's it, you ain't got to look at it the same way you look at football. I've been right. betting baseball and hockey all weekend. I've been making the same bets. I'm just betting the overs. You and I hadn't even talked about the Predators. I know. I know. We had we'll, we'll, we'll get to that next. We hadn't talked hockey. On this I, I got I got a hundred and fifty dollars worth of NBA and hockey bets <laughs> out there working. Right all now. right. Here's what we're gonna close out with. All right. ESPN's get up ratings have been uh, less than stellar. We'll say that. I had it awful on my sheet, but we, we won't. We won't say off. I've, I've talked you down. You, you did talk me down a little bit, okay. but but look, I'm. And there we go. Chris jumps in. He says, "Go Preds." That's absolutely. Hey, we're all for the Tennessee team. Cash, it. cash, and tickets. Yep, better believe it. All right, so uh, I'd, I'd like to see the Predators get back to the Stanley Cup, just because it was such an event last year in Nashville. But they've hit every over so far. Here is the deal with ESPN's Get Up program. You got Mike Greenberg, you got Michelle Beadle, and you got uh, Jalen Rose. And then you've got a rotating cast of like a fourth. So a, a lot of the first week was uh, Booger McFarland. I am curious your business side of things because uh, you've owned businesses and you understand like when something isn't working, you got to find a way to either make it work, like hold out long enough to see like, all right, is it going to turn or do you just immediately flip? 
So the way that this has gone, their ratings, like for that, that time slot, have dropped from what it was even a few weeks before, like the week before that. I mean, they've lost hundreds of thousands of viewers. And from what it was a year ago at the same time, they've lost over 100,000 viewers. And I'm, I'm curious. We know that ESPN had to fire hundreds of employees. They have been cutting back salaries. They've been lowering their, their budget, like trying to figure out a way to make sports television work. And I understand where the idea of Sports Center isn't so much necessary anymore. Like they'll still have it on ESPN two or, or whatever ESPN U, but the the sports morning shows, like NFL Network has a great one, Good Morning Football. I, I tune into that one a, a few times a week. Um, you watch that one. You watch you know whatever the Dan Patrick Show comes on at like nine o'clock. Like there's always a show on somewhere. So it's not like ESPN was trying to reinvent the wheel here. But the salary from these guys was about $15 million a year just for those three characters. And from that, they also had to build a brand new studio in New York that has left, by reports, a lot of the people back at ESPN incredibly resentful because the way that ESPN used to work was all of these people, like you were stuck in the middle of a field in Connecticut, but you were there together, right? And the brand ESPN would build the stars back then. And I don't know that that's necessarily the case anymore because Greenberg and whatnot was part of the most successful radio show in the history of sports media. Like he, that's what he did. But then I feel like people may have turned on him. Michelle Beadle tried to do her own thing on NBC and that failed and she ended up losing her job there. She got brought back for $5 million a year which is astronomical compared to what her market value was. Jalen Rose is making just over $3 million a year, but he's an NBA guy. He had his own radio show, but that show was not doing well. Like, it just, it, it wasn't, it was syndicated nationally on some spots, but, like, in others, even in Memphis, it was like, all right, well, we'll put this on if, like, our other scheduled stuff isn't on. Like, it, it was just whatever. Like, the numbers were not great on it. If the numbers don't go up, because they haven't yet, they, they've gone even lower in week two than they did in week one, that means, and their demographic has dropped significantly. Like, you want the 18 to 45 market, right? And, and what their market is, is the 34 to like 64, 69, or whatever it is. Like, it's older people that are tuning in. But you want the younger demographic because that's how you can sell advertising. If all of this is going on, like you've paid tens of millions of dollars, 20 million, 30 million, whatever, to build a brand new studio in New York, you're paying $15 million a year in talent, and the numbers are not there to back it up. Even though it's just two weeks in, at what point would you, like, do you just let it keep going and, and work itself out? Like, do you see what this does over football season? you you, you got like an insane level of question here. All right, so tell me so let's take tell a couple of things. The, the investment, on. the return on investment does not look good right now. At what point do you turn or do you ever turn and no, you just let it run? You've got to let it run. You've got to let it run. You cannot put hundreds of millions of dollars into something and say it didn't work for two weeks, so I'll all cash in and blow it off. Like, you know, it's not how this stuff works, okay? Yeah, it's not, how, with it's not how anything on that scale works, okay? First, I understand. Let me address the New York thing, okay? The greatest thing they could, they had to adapt. They had to absolutely adapt because nobody, as of new talent, is going to Bristol, Connecticut. Years ago, they built this city inside a city and said, everybody comes here. And, and they are realizing we are not landing talent. Talent is now staying in their local homes and doing shows from their local homes because you can get a good camera and a green screen and an Ethernet cable, and you could shoot it to Fox LA, or you could shoot it to New York, or you can shoot well, it to Kirk Atlanta. Kirk Street lives in New or in uh, Nashville, yeah. and, and he does all of his stuff from, from at home. From home, like he got his yes. own ISDN line it, so that he could actually shoot it straight. This through. is this is not that complicated. So they understood the way of this city in Bristol is going bye bye. 
See, I knew that you would find a way to explain this. So, thing. so the the, the 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 New York thing is is we're going to start a new radio show, a new morning show, and and we're going to do it, and this is going to be the first thing to break off. But so, and that's the thing; it's yeah, not a radio show. But okay, but what, I get it. So, so what? Hang on. Point? So I'm going to address the radio part. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. The ESPN is getting out of the radio business. They 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 have they have. Shut down so many of the radio shows. Does Get Up have a podcast? I'm sure they'll start to probably record it and put it out on podcast. Okay. If I had to guess, um, ESPN has also, for some reason, been really bad about trying to monetize podcasts. This was one of the things that Bill Simmons used to try to fight with him about all the time. He was just like, "You guys are terrible at this." If you realize the numbers I was getting, um, so so that's so that's that. The radio numbers. They're going to lose all those numbers because they're out. Of, they're getting out of the radio business. Another thing that's going to hurt them a little bit is they're actually competing with Golic and Wingo. The shows are on at the exact same time. Hey, yes, they do have a podcast. Okay, so the shows are on at the exact same time, and and so, but but they're completely different shows. The Greeny Show and the Beatles Show is more of a sports news show, and it's. I'm going to use a phrase that I don't. I don't mean. It's more of a grown-up show, okay? But if but if you want to watch, now they shows, do jump off of, of sports the same way that we do. Yes, but, but if you want to, but if you want to to do kind of shock jock and laugh and and, and, and food challenges and things like that, you're going to go to Golik and Ringo, uh, 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 Wingo, and that's not a bad thing. But that's where your younger audience is. I'm also going to disagree with you on the advertising thing. I don't look. I've never advertised anything or whatnot. But for my business, if I had to do localized advertising, I would I would shoot my ads to people in their 30s to 60s over 18 to, to 45. Agreed, agreed. And, and because those 18-year-olds ain't buying progressive insurance, that is the head advertiser for them, or Geico, or, or any of those. The 18-year-olds do not care, and they're not, they're not buying the things. Rocket Mortgage ain't selling to 18-year-olds, because 18-year-olds are going to rent or live at home with mama. All right? right? They're selling to 30-year-olds. The median age of viewers for... Uh, for get up, yeah, is like forty nine. Yeah, but so those are people that spending money. I understand. I'm, I'm with you. So but I don't advertisers think a problem with look that. to build a brand. I, I respect when, when that. When people are younger, and, and so I'm, totally, I'm looking at it from an advertising perspective as opposed to. I, I like, totally get that, but I was also told that that, and, and so we're going to look at the NFL thing too. I've been saying forever, and everyone's saying, "Oh, the NFL is going to lose so much money. Oh, they're going to lose so much money. Look at their ratings; they're so bad. What happened?" All of the new broadcasting coming out, they have people killing themselves to try to do it. Paying three and four times more than the people previously did, even though yeah. the ratings are going down. Like it, Papa John's that's, that's jumps right. out. And, then and Pizza, Pizza Hut says, Hunt. I'll pay you double. Yeah. Like it, it just, Fox, oh, we'll take Thursday night, the worst game of the week. I want it, and I'm going to pay you three times what NBC was paying you. Yeah. So, so to, to ratings don't tell every story, first thing. Second, I've actually watched this show. I wake up every morning, and it is habitual. I turn on Golic and Wingo because it was on. And as soon as Get Up came on, I went to it. Now, you talk about their salaries. They're not getting paid $15 million to do this show. They're getting paid $15 million to work for ESPN. Right. Because Greeny does other shows. Beetle does other shows. Jalen does other shows. So you have to amortize that money across other platforms, not just this one show. So that's not. I know Beetle does NBA in, in, stuff, but what no, is, Beetle, what Beetle does uh, uh, sports. What's it sports called? Nation. Sports Nation, um, and Jalen still does all the NBA stuff. Getting Jalen on the show is huge for getting a younger audience. What dominates sports media right now? What sport? It ain't the NFL. Are you talking about right this second? No, not just today because it's playoffs. Oh, NBA. Year year round, the NBA is yeah. the biggest sport in the media. Yeah, and, You're and right. ESPN obviously is you going got, to jump on that. They're, they're going to get, get away from NFL because they can't afford it anymore. Well, it's, and it's not just that. I don't know that the media guys that cover the NFL are nearly as good or as entertaining. And I don't think the stories nationwide, year-round are as good coming out of the NFL as they are. The, the stars in the NBA are stars even when the game's not going on. Agreed. They're doing, and you could say this is, you know, the MSNBC would, left wing there stuff. Are just as many but, stars in the NBA as there are actual stars in the NFL. 
If, if not more. Yeah, oh, there's more, and they are way more entertaining to listen to. They have a billion more followers on Twitter, and they're more out there, um, and they're more likable to be. And that's just that's just the truth, whether you like them or not, because some of these guys push their political agendas, and it upsets people, and that's why people don't like it. Look at their Twitter followers. Look at their advertisers. You cannot like LeBron James because he he's pushing an agenda. But he's worth the run, billions of dollars. But he's worth reason. billions of dollars. He's got a gazillion you know dollar ad budget, and and everything he sells turns to gold. So you can either be a part of that, or you can fight him. The other thing that I like about this show, and this is kind of why I've gone to it, you and I were talking about the uh, UFC stuff with Conor McGregor. I didn't know anything about it. I'm watching. Get up, and all of a sudden I text you and say, "Oh." Well, they're about to have Dana White on this show in a minute, and he's going to tell me everything about it. And I, I'll admit, and, I tuned and, into it. And I only, he, I've only watched a few times, but that was one of the and few And he times. spent, and this wasn't just a five-minute interview with him, he spent 20 minutes. They showed video, they broke it down, they asked him real grown-up questions about this thing, and he spent as long as it took to really... The reason I still watch ESPN for their, their sports news is because when something happens that I want information on, they're going to get the guys to give me that information. Like the the real, the biggest guys. To, to they're give going the to give story. you the best um, information from that. Now, we've got guys that we both follow and we both kind of like, Clay Travis, that, that makes a living beating up on ESPN and crushing their ratings and this and another. Let me tell you this. It's funny that he crushes these ratings because they're not as good as everyone thinks they should be. But he never brings up Fox Sports ratings. And he never brings yeah. up NBC Sports ratings. And anybody competing with them, this is an NFL thing. You can say that my ratings are tanking all day long, but I'm still three times bigger than everybody else around. So get off my ass, Jack. Yeah. But Bill, but he, Bill Simmons is another one that, that hates ESPN. No, he no, 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 bash no, no. Them. But he doesn't bash them at all. No, he doesn't he, bash them, but he, he does not. He used to bash them. No, he, no. He, he first left. He he bashed Goodell, and they stood up for Goodell, and he got pissed off about that. But Bill, but no, he he talked for a long time. Like there are multiple instances on his podcast and everywhere else where he has talked very ill of ESPN and the way that their business is run. So it's it, he's well, not, he doesn't yeah. bash them in the sense that uh, that Clay Travis bashes no. them, but he he does he talks derogatorily. I don't uh, think he has okay. in a long time. I listen to the guy every show. I, mean, I literally been, listen yeah, to every show. While, it's been years. We're talking when, about over a year. But you know that he has. He but has it's never. About but it's never about a ratings thing. It's never. It's always. I don't understand why they're doing this, and I don't understand why they're doing that. But literally, right? Sixty percent of Clay's. The reason I quit listening to Clay's show is sixty percent of his show has nothing to do with anything but ESPN. Yeah. And I'm thinking, if ESPN didn't exist, you would not be a person. Literally, you would you would be a nobody because all you do is talk about them, and that tells me a lot his, about his, you and your show. And I have a problem with that. His his topics changed a lot uh, whenever he started doing Fox Sports Radio. Yes, and look, I enjoyed him more like as not a national sports guy, but like just a regional, regional. guy because he he talked more SEC football, and he's still one of the only national guys that talks SEC football religiously. Like he he talks a lot of SEC stuff, and and that's what I'm interested in. So I like the way that he goes about uh, how he talks about legal situations because obviously he was a lawyer. Like he's been involved in stuff like that. I I enjoy that stuff. Now I I do not always enjoy the ESPN bashing stuff because yes, obviously there is an agenda there. Like, it, he is going to point out the absolute most negative aspect of it without and, pointing out the other side. And he says... And you over, have to know that going Like, on. literally every show, the first ten minutes are the exact same. Like, yeah. that's that's the truth. That's the truth. ESPN's no, it, bad. ESPN's pushing an agenda. ESPN's well, lying it, about this. It, it lying all depends about that. On, on what's happening. Because uh, there's a lot that, of shows that talk nothing about ESPN. And it's things that nobody but, cares about. Literally, nobody cares. The president of ESPN resigned... Nobody cares about that guy. Nobody has talked about him since. No, nobody cares. Like, there's been a couple of dead spin articles about it, but nobody's talking about it. You know why? Because he doesn't move the needle. I don't even know his name. That's how little he moves the needle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I understand. Like, like, but, but when that's the premise of your show, then why aren't you covering all the other sports media groups? And talk about their ratings. And let's well, see how shitty they are. There's some that, that because he does. Because they're toilets. 
there there's some that he does discuss. However, like you're not gonna because nobody else puts in as much as ESPN does, right? Like Disney has their like it is ESPN, right? It is a whole different aspect. They're billions of dollars, right? Yeah. NBC Sports Network, CBS Sports Network, Fox Sports One, all this like it's pennies to the dollar compared to what ESPN puts in. So obviously, but hang on, you're going for the biggest fish. So I, well, I'm going to disagree with you on that. NBC probably the exact same size as ESPN for everything they put into sports, but they they do I, so much on their regular network. Yeah, if, they, if they ESPN, spread it like out, ABC they spread it this. out, they spread it out. But ABC does get a lot of ESPN stuff. But they spread the money out across so many different channels that that it doesn't all equate from one big pool. And ESPN says, no, we've just created this brand of channels and we're going to put it all in one big pool. That's the only difference. But look at what NBC spends on the Olympics. And look at what NBC spends on their NFL contract. Because they get the best game of the week and they get the primetime game. Um, You know, look at the money that they're putting out there. What Turner puts out there for, for basketball and college basketball, they spread it out over a group of channels. Some people find very difficult to find, but that's not ESPN's fault. ESPN said, no, we're going to create these four channels. We're going to create this set of this set of channels, and, and we're going to put everything here. Yeah. And and, and that, doesn't, that doesn't make them any – like I don't know that their dollar figure is any bigger or smaller than – because NBC owns – Major League Baseball Network, NBC owns the Hockey Network, NBC owns the NFL Network. Like, NBC owns all these other channels, but they don't put their name on them. I don't think NBC them. owns the... I know they own the Golf Network. The Golf I, Network? I, I think MLB is actually... Uh, I think that's ESPN now. Uh, no, ESPN doesn't... ABC doesn't own the MLB Network. They are licensing through it to use them as uh, uh, coverage. They're paying for licensing rights. Yeah, so I don't think it's NBC that actually. Oh, NBC. Owns it. I think NBC owns the channel. So, so a network has to own the channel. The channels do not exist in their own. A network has to own the channels. So the NFL network who is owns- owned by NBC. That's why the NFL network had half the games were on NFL network. The other half the games were on NBC network. Well, yeah, but like at the same time, half the games were on NFL Network and then half were on CBS. Like they were simulcasting on but the same thing. Like, they simulcast the ones on CBS so NBC could get those ratings. They simulcast on CBS. Uh, the NFL Network got all Thursday night I'm games. I'm to do some research. I don't know this it, off the top of my head. It, it, NBC, I promise you, NBC, there's no chance I'd be wrong twice in one night. I was wrong about the <laughs> rest of the thing on Thursdays, not Tuesdays. Just absolutely not a chance I'd be wrong twice in one night. All right, all right. But no, so so this is this is the thing. Your, your question is a very complex question around this whole deal, all right? But at the end of the day, yeah, I, I think the show is fine. And if you go into it just looking for a morning sports show to listen to, I kind of enjoy it. I like it. Maybe I'm an old man, and, and maybe it's more my cup of tea. I've kind of always liked Greeny. Now, Greeny says some things that I think are ridiculous sometimes, but there's not a single person that I listen to that I agree with everything that they say. Hey, let me let me interrupt you. Uh, MLB Network, uh, primarily owned by Major League Baseball, with television providers AT&T, uh, which acquired it, uh, acquired it after buying direct TV. Cox Communications. Uh, Comcast through its NBC Sports Group and Charter Communications and Cox Communications having minority ownership. No, okay. So they, they, they're all minority of the, owners. Like the NFL owns all of the NFL, but in order to have a television channel, they, some you have to network, have minority partners. It, no, no, you don't just have to have minority. Some network has to be affiliated with you. There are no TV channels in the cable world or the satellite world that don't have a network affiliation. A network has to be a part of you because the network has to sign off on everything that you're doing. Okay, okay. That's that's that I that I know. So NBC is partnership with MLB. NBC is partnership with, with NFL. So when CBS played their games, they played those games twice on the same time, simulcast. But when they were on NBC, you would you could not get it on the NFL Network because NBC is not yeah, going NFL to Network it. is not. Uh, I don't believe that's NBC. It says uh, it's owned completely by the NFL. It's owned by the NFL. But the channel, on, it is uh, it is headquartered in the Los Angeles suburb of Culver City, California. Broadcast its worldwide feed from Encompass Digital Media, formerly. Uh, Crawford Communications in Atlanta, Georgia. That's fine. Somebody has to be the network affiliate for the channel. That's what I'm trying to tell you. 
Yeah, I'm interested in this. FX. FX is owned by Fox. It's, it's It has nothing to do with Fox. It's just a channel on cable. Yeah, but it's, it's, USA. Like, it's like Turner. Is, U, like yeah. Turner owns TBS, yes. TNT, U, USA. True TV. NBC owns USA. Yeah. Like, like all of these cable channels have to be affiliated with the network. They have to be. I am so interested in this. Like, we've gone super long tonight, but uh, let's see. Is, it, is NBC affiliated with NFL Network? We're going to Google this right now. And then we'll do that. I'm going to crunch this ice. Let's see. Da, 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 da. I don't know if anybody's still listening. Uh, no, we got two people streaming. But we, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, let's see. It's shared between CBS, NBC, and NFL Network. That's Thursday Night Football. It doesn't say anything about NBC. We're going. We're we're going to research that, and we will figure it out for for next week. But either way, it, so to to close this thing out, what um, I don't think there's anything wrong with the show. I think the show will do fine. I also think the way people consume their morning routines today are not the same as the way people used to. I think the numbers are going to go down for everybody involved. For those early morning shows at 6 a.m. our time. Well, especially because like kids are not going to watch it. And, That's and right. Kids are where people used to get their their sports. That, like, it, I, my television. On. My television is dominated by my children. The reason I and get to watch Nickelodeon it, and Disney. Shows. The reason I get to watch it in the morning times is because they're iPadding. That's it. That makes sense. Yes, they get up, they eat their breakfast, they watch well, their and, iPads. And when, and people used to tune in for Sports Center, and now like you've got Twitter and Facebook and yeah. Instagram and I, everything else. I know all it. the highlights before I've gotten out of the shower. Like I don't even turn the TV on. I just wake up and check my phone and see what happens. I check right. the ESPN app. Ay yeah yeah. All right, we went long tonight. We may split this up into two different podcasts, but either way, we will get it out there uh, as usual. You guys know the business. The show is brought to you by WinningCuresEverything.com. Get your latest news and great stories on the website. Make sure and follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash WinningCuresEverything. Uh, we will have all sorts of different stuff. We'll probably be back later this week. In the meantime, uh, we will see you guys at some point. Chris and I have not discussed it yet, but we'll figure it out. Let me know when it's good, though. I right, still got 50 seconds. Yeah, we hadn't talked NBA playoffs, hockey playoffs. We didn't talk anything. I have I have bet so much sports. Oh, this week. Nice. We talked forever. I know. Poor puppy. It was just so oh, much fun. They hadn't Poor puppy. They hadn't moved. Yeah, they really hadn't moved. You open those cages and they're coming out. Uh, there's some very bad. Oh, that one's going to be pissing puppy. Yeah, I have my floor that I just cleaned. <laughs> Get the good shit. Did you say there was a girl? And Iris's violin thing, whose name is Thor Hannah. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about that. It was really good. Who the fuck would do that? <laughs> I wanted to fight that dad. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I wanted to be like, hey, can you walk outside? I need to ask you a question. Hey, just put the shit with him. All right, right. we're good. It's pretty bad. This